Well, hi, it's Jim, but we're, uh, we're not in my shop. We're in my office and we're at my radio desk where uh, I far too seldom spend time actually listening to a radio. So uh, I received a number of requests uh, about uh, these radios, in particular the satellite uh, 800 over here. And uh, so I'm going to explore uh, a certain aspect uh, of these radios, uh, all three of these, uh, on this video. And uh, we'll see how they all compare and maybe learn a little bit more about um, just how effective uh, these controls are. And what I'm talking about are filters. And so I, I'm not so familiar with exactly how the filters operate inside the S800. I'm sure you can find out on the internet pretty quick. <clears throat> but since we're just going to listen and compare the different settings, it doesn't really matter how they're achieving what they're achieving. Um, now, the Collins is known for having um, filters in its IF that are squared off in the sense that they don't have that nice typical curve that you might be used to. Uh, in, instead, it's like that. And so when we use the uh, Collins radio, we can listen for that effect. And we can think about what we're hearing and imagine that shape and kind of come to grips with how the two of them uh, work together. Uh, this radio has a more typical filtering done with capacitors and coils. It has a, you know, that kind of curve to it. And again, we can uh, tune through stations and listen to it and the like. Kind of get used to what these filters sound like. Um, and then we can compare how the Satellite 800 is is faring. So, uh, so why don't we do that? Uh, right now I have these two radios both tuned to the same uh, signal. It's supposed to be a good strong one. When you know it, we just passed the uh, half hour mark and it looks like they've changed their broadcast string. So, huh. okay, well, we have to find another one. Let's, let's do that. What I'm looking for is a really nice, strong, clear signal, not one that's weak right now. Oh, yes, and, and I, I didn't mention this. So, this is my volume control here. One, two, three volume controls. This one's not used. So this control, the one that's most to the right, is this radio. This control in the middle is the Hammerland here. And this control is the SP, uh, I'm sorry, is the uh, R390, R390A to be specific. And uh, the outputs of these radios are fed into the, exactly the same stereo uh, or amplifier and speaker system that I have here. So you're always hearing the same speakers uh, no matter what I do. The only difference you hear is because of the radi uh, radio's output signal. Okay, so let's see. Okay, that's a very good signal. I'm looking up here. Nice steady signal. Well, it's probably WEWN or EWTN, Catholic Radio, uh, coming 
out of the States broadcasting in Spanish. So that's good. That's a, a good signal for us because it'll be nice and steady. So, so we'll start with this radio. Make sure it's tuned uh, properly now. Okay, so now I'll open up the um, filter to what it calls 13 kilocycles. Just ignore that. I'll check the tuning, since the alignment in the radio may not be perfect. The flashing light here is just a loose light bulb, so just ignore that. My nice strong signal has faded out here a bit. Okay, we'll switch it down to 8. Down to 3. Just waiting for some music. Okay, here we go. Now the bandwidth now is three kilocycles. Now we're going to switch to a different type of filter, a filter based on a crystal. And we're going to go to 1.3 kilohertz bandwidth. tighter now to 500 hertz. I need to clean my radio up here. Sorry about that. I wasn't expecting that kind of trouble. I just have to turn the volume up higher. I retune the radio. We'll go down to point two uh, kilocycles, two hundred hertz bandwidth. Allí 
I'm sitting here and I'm hearing this for real and there's quite a few speakers there's some under my desk and some up there um, so I may be hearing this much differently than you are there is no compression going on in my ears as far as I know uh, but there may be compression in the microphone and the whole system that you're listening to so and of course I'm intimately aware of the fact that I turn the radio up or down or, or that kind of thing so, leaving all that aside, the interesting thing I find when I do this is when I get that thing uh, turned all the way down to 200 uh, kilocycle bandwidth and uh, have it tuned properly on the station and get the volume turned up a little bit, it pretty much sounds the same again. Not really, of course, not really the case, but uh, it doesn't sound as bad as you might imagine. Let's put it that way. Um, you did notice, I hope, that when I had it on the crystal filter settings, and I apologize for all that noise, if I'd known it was going to be that noisy, I might have done a little bit here to get this thing cleaned up a bit. Um, on the crystal settings, as you tune through the uh, passband, or as you move the passband past the signal, or however you want to look at it, it's a very characteristic howly sort of uh, regenerative kind of sound to it. It's very very characteristic of this of, uh, of that kind of filter. Not apparent when you're just using the ordinary coil capacitor type filter. So that's one station going uh, through here. That was 1250. We'll put the same frequency up on this one. Tune it, tune it to the same. Well, 50. Let's see if it's really there. Okay. Now, when we're going to compare these radios. Um, one of the things to remember is that you, you can't remember. You can't remember sound very long. We are not built to truly have a uh, recording of sounds in our head from even more than 10 seconds ago. It makes it very, very difficult for us to compare, but it also makes it real easy for us to accept a poor quality sound, like out of a little tiny radio. Uh, you first turn it on, it sounds pretty canned, but after a few seconds, you know, it doesn't really bother you uh, as much. So th this problem with our hearing is uh, is very evident when you do this kind of comparison. The other thing is, these don't have the same kind of settings. This one, uh, the highest uh, <coughs> bandwidth is 13, and this one it's 16. And does 16 really mean the same sort of thing as this? 13, are they calculated the same way? Are they some standard people follow? Um, nothing sudden happens at 16 kilohertz, and nothing sudden happens at 8 kilohertz. That's just a, a point in the roll-off curve. So we're not comparing apples to uh, apples to, to a large... apples. We're not comparing apples to apples to a large degree. So here we go. Let's go with this. This is 16. 16. You can't even tune it. It's so broad. <clears throat> That's eight. I didn't even hear a change. 
But but now you know what? The roll off is tighter, and I can I can tune it. sounds are gone from from it. Didn't notice that on the other radio so much. This one goes even lower, goes down to a hundred kilohertz. There's that characteristic uh, sound again as you tune a little bit off and you hear that, that horrible regenerative kind of sound or I don't know how to describe it. In this case the filter in this radio are very famous. This has uh, a kind of uh, mechanical filter. Uh, at the IF frequency level it has a mechanical filter in it and that gives it that impossible to get square characteristic you can't get it electrically with coils and capacitors it's pretty muffled I'm gonna compare that if I can make my other radio work oh radio, which we're listening to right now, is at 100 kilohertz bandwidth. Now this one is at 200. We'll compare it. It's a little suspicious about the filtering on this radio <coughs> because I'm still hearing hiss and, and things like that. And by the time you have it all the way down to this bandwidth, you wouldn't expect to hear any hiss. But that just goes to show you things are quite different and can be satisfactory in either case. So let's 
compare now to this radio. So let's see where we are here. Turning up the bass speakers a little bit here. They're cheating a bit. Whoops. Okay, so I've got the three radios that sound fairly balanced now. And we're listening to this, this radio here. So its bandwidth is currently set to six. Six kilohertz. The next setting is four. The next setting is 2.3. That's pretty muffled. And back to six. Oh. <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll set these two radios as close as possible to this one, to the six on this one. So six, so this one will be set to eight, and this one will be set to well, 8. So I'll leave these two on 8. Well, that's interesting. They both have 8. <laughs> Never noticed. But the highest we can go on this radio is 6. So we'll start with this one, this one, this one. Just go around. I think i got to give a little more uh, volume here. Cause there we go. You keep your eyes on my hands. kind of messes it up, doesn't it? So we'll have to, next time around, I'll be much more careful on that. two sound very similar, this radio and this radio. So the 8 the 6 sound pretty similar. This guy sounds different. He sounds brighter. He sounds more like 8. So once again, I'm trusting this one better than this one. Um, this one has a really cool feature. Maybe I'll try to demonstrate it before we're done here. So 
Okay, so let's let's go down now. That has a four. This one's on three. This one's on four. So these these two now have the same number, and this one is a, a little tighter. So here we go. Starting again with this one. got some alignment problems here. Okay, so in my ear, the, these two sound the same now. These two sound very similar, and they're both set to four. This one's set to three, which is even tighter, but it sounds much wider. That's what I'm hearing. I'll, I'll show you. We'll, we'll put this radio on and compare it to this one. Now, one of the things about the uh, SP600 is that it's known for not having much bass, and it's a design feature of it. It's a communications radio. It's not intended for listening to beautiful music. But this radio, almost the opposite, it's known for having really good bass. It, it really shows up. You can really hear the difference between these two. This one always sounds kind of canned. Um, fine, fine for voice, but for music, you start missing the bass part of it. Well, that might make it always sound brighter, even though now I've stopped it down, in a sense, uh, because it has no bass to kind of flood in there. Um, of what, what I end up doing is still turning it up loud enough to hear a fair bit of uh, trouble. I, that's my guess on what's happening there. So let's go a little further, because this radio will go down to 2.3. My, my uh, stereo is humming a fair bit, too. I don't know if you guys can hear that. 2.3, 2, what can I do, 1.3. Okay, so here we go, 2.3. It's really muffled. On this is on the S800. kind of hear the filter in that one a little bit because now I'm on that crystal filter which is uh, also produces a relatively square um, characteristic curve yeah just not as good as this guy here speaking of which there he is
Okay, now the last thing I'll do here, I'll set each radio for what I think is the best listening. It's pretty easy. On this one, it's going to be the 6 uh, kilohertz, and I'm going to miss some of the bright highs. They're just not there. It's a good strong signal. On my flashing SP600 here. I had an eight. Oh, be good. But these ones, remember, these ones go up beyond that. They really will open up wide. And they're communications receivers, so they go much wider than any broadcast would go. But on short wave, it's surprising sometimes the actual fidelity that's being uh, transmitted. It's very high fre frequency, uh, very uh, yeah, high, high frequency type sound going to make a diagram here for you, but let's forget about that. Let's just listen to these guys now. And what's happened? Wow, it's been a long video. We're at the top of the hour and they've come quiet. Yeah. I might go off the air. Sit here listening to nothing for three minutes. Hmm. Hey, that might give us a good chance to try the uh, ABC on these. So that was that was uh, this radio just going through a fade. that radio going through a fade. That was a, a minor fade there. went off the air. Quickly, let's find another one. Which radio do I choose to find another one with? This one. Why? Because I like to use this one, but guess what? I don't know what I'm tuning to. So, on second thought, let's use this one. Why? It's fast. Eleven 
11680. There we go. Radio Radio right away. As soon as I listen to this radio, and then switch to this one. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do the volume thing there. Let's switch the other way. It's easier for me. Let's listen for the highs here and how clear this is. Here we go. Here, try the same thing on this one here. Another chance to listen to the AVC on this radio versus these. Now listen to how the signal, when it's fading ever so slightly, you can watch the meter here. Yeah, on the uh, satellite 800, I'm not aware of any kind of fading. Uh, it sounds like a very steady signal. But on the SP600, you can hear the whoosh, whoosh, whoosh sort of sound. Let's see the other radio here. Well, this one has an AGC control on it, which is on medium right now. We'll switch it here to fast. See that meter? That's the one to watch. I'll put it on slow now. Hmm. I like the look at any of that. Yeah, when I first flipped it over to slow, I must have brought another capacitor into the circuit that hasn't been charged for a long time. And this was to pull pull down the ABC voltage into a range where there was some distortion in the signal, which got me quite concerned. But it did come back and just leave that on medium for now. Okay, back to what we're doing then. How bright is that compared to this? See, I might even suggest you there'd be some listener fatigue from the uh, tight bandwidth on the uh, satellite 800. So I think that's the end of my demonstration. Yeah, let's put them all on. Okay, well, thanks for watching. This was just an, an exploration into the uh, uh, different uh, filter settings on these radios, in particular to try to highlight the uh, satellite 800 and enable all of us, including me, or mainly, mo mainly mostly me, be able to hear quite clearly how these radios compare. So 
So uh, thanks a lot for watching. It was a bit of a long video, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it.